Hi. Hi. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm losing my voice. So that sucks. And I've honestly been like rattling my brain all day. I'm like, how could I have lost my voice? I've been feeling so much better. The sickness is like barely there. I had some like coughing this morning, but besides that, like healthy, fine. Losing my voice. What's happening? And as I'm like <laughs> making pasta, I grab the spatula and I'm like, I don't know, D. I think everyone's all jealous and shit. Cause I'm like the lead singer of a band dude and then it hits me as I'm trying to rap the entire song of D12 again um I <laughs> remember yesterday when I got off of work I went to my parents place hung out for a little bit and then I came back home and on the way home I didn't really want to listen to an audiobook and I didn't really want to pop back into like a stream or something so I was like I'll just throw on some music I'll shuffle my playlist and I'm singing along with some of the songs I'm skipping a lot and then I get to D12 my band and I rap the entire fucking song I lost my voice rapping D12 in my car apparently louder than I thought I don't know what to do with that information but now you have it too so hello guys happy vlog I don't know how much filming I'm gonna do just because of my voice to be entirely honest because in my head I sound terrible but I'm having lunch I've gotten a little bit further with Hyde so that's like my big reading plans today to get that finished at least and then I have super fun exciting plans for tomorrow for the vlog which is super exciting I'm really really ready for it to be tomorrow but yeah, I just wanted to kick off the vlog and say hi and tell you my ridiculously stupid story I had. So that's it for right now. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> nope. Hey guys, just wanted to check in with you. I'm officially a quarter of the way through Hide. I'm on page 60. Two. I'm on day two of the hide and seek and I have thoughts okay to preface this is my first Kirsten White I've never read her books before I think she wrote some kind of like Frankenstein book and I've heard great reviews so that's all I really know of this author um I get her confused with Hannah White or Kirsten Hannah or Hannah something like that anyway doesn't matter but this is my first book by this author now there are 12 I believe contestants in total which is a lot of characters to follow which isn't inherently like a terrible thing but the beginnings of the book especially I was just like I don't care like it's super in a way info dumpy where it's just like let me tell you each character's like profession somewhat of an age their perf like what they're doing um why they're here their motives whatever and like it makes sense that that's information to know but also like I don't care about any of them like they could all lose and I'm fine with that because like going into the book the first character we're introduced to is Mac and we're following her throughout the story primarily so in my head I'm already like she's got to win like that's the point is that she's like this pro hider and all this skill and she's like our main focus of a character so we want her to win and so I'm like why are we giving so much other characters like these descriptions there's so many names and I'm just like I don't remember whose name goes to who and so it's a little annoying that like Isabel for example is talked about and it's like oh Isabel is an intern and that's like her shtick like that's her one character trait and that's all you know about her and anytime her name is like mentioned that's what's talked about as well or like the pants suits or blazers like that's her shtick um Rosie makes jewelry so if they talk about Rosie at all it's like Rosie the girl with the silver ring and you're like oh right <laughs> and I just feel like if you have to tell me which character 
by their like one profession or their one personality trait then i they're you're not doing a good job telling me the characters so i get a little annoyed reading about each character like that <sighs> another thing is, is like this is just like your progressive tiktok horror like this just feels super influenced by tiktok and it's not like a direct thing because like it's set um around like the new it movies coming out and when like clowns were just like showing up on the streets being all creepy like it's set around that time um i think like a year or two after that but this just screams like tiktok influencers because most of these people are influencers it just feels very like very progressive really try hard and so it's like a little annoying at times but i get it because people are like this and they just feel like very strong stereotypes of people which i I don't, like, dislike or despise or hate or whatever. It's just, like, okay. My only other issue is just the writing isn't for me. I don't think I love it. It's not terrible. It's easy. But there was one entire paragraph where I was just, like, what the f- what? Like, actually what? But I don't know if I'll be able to find it. But yeah, there's just like sentences that I'll like have to reread or phrasing that I'm just like, why do you say it like that? Like, I don't know. It just doesn't feel, it's not my favorite writing. But one of the paragraphs says, the sun creeps along as the sun is, I don't know, want to do. The occasional insects wander across Mac's legs as insects are want to do. Mac does nothing as Mac is wont to do. Like, why is that a, that, why is that a paragraph? What? Why? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't love the writing. Although the premise, I'm still, like, here for. I'm sitting here, like, theorizing, like, what it could be. I don't think the atmosphere is the best, but I don't think it's terrible. I think if the, no, I'm so, so sorry to this author. I think if the writing was a bit better and just a bit more, like, I don't know if the writing was better I think the atmosphere would be so fantastic but I still feel like overall pretty there like I can't picture shit but like the it looks like this like this is a lot the main entrance is here and then I don't know it makes sense you're like okay one character was over here one character was over here but even at that like I still it may be over here like it's hard to like pinpoint where everybody was and thank god she doesn't tell you each character's location for each night at least not yet she'll kind of cherry pick um you'll obviously get the point of view for the person that gets seeked or whatever at least that's my assumption but i just like i don't know it's hard to visualize this super overgrown amusement park with like weird twisty windy ways that don't really make sense and i can picture a good amount but it's not a hundred percent there so far though i am enjoying the premise i really like max character i really like i would rewrite the book a different way but i like overall what it's doing i'm gonna stop talking because this is too long so sorry i will come back to you guys oh goodness <clears throat> I will come back to you guys around the like 100 page mark or maybe 75% through if depending on how like my feelings might change or what if I might have more to say. I'm gonna go. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so I've made it a bit further again. Not a whole lot. I'm like literally stopped in the middle of a chapter. So complaint number one. The chapters are too long. But that's just, like, a personal feeling. I do think it's a quick read. Um, I have pros. I have a few pros. So, one, there are a lot of characters, and the more time goes on with them, the more I'm like, yeah, I'm glad there's so many characters. Because it's so fun getting, like, a slight glimpse into each one's day of what they're doing, what they're thinking, of, like, different things going on. I think the atmosphere has gotten better i have been referring to the map constantly like um this last chapter i'm like okay they're around here he's around here like pointing out so i can visibly see 
and I'm finding that to be way more helpful. This is probably the first time I've ever used a map in a book in my entire life, but I'm loving the experience. I also love getting a glimpse in the characters like moments whether they're being seeked or whether they're hiding or whatever else is going on like I'm really enjoying those perspectives and like what's happening <laughs> I think the atmosphere is great there are thrills in here because you're speculating on so much of these like little pieces you're getting you're like what does this mean what's this about and then you kind of forget about it for a while and then it's brought up again and you're like oh yeah what's it about like what am I thinking like it's it's like a constant strategy of like what's going on and I love that I think that's so much fun as well as just like I don't want to spoil anything I'm not going to spoil this book but I am enjoying it I really am I know I have more than halfway to go so there might be more critiques but just like the atmosphere and the thrills and seeing like what the characters are thinking and being in their head as like something else is happening in the park and like we kind of know what's going on but they have no clue and so it's just kind of fun to see it all evolve and the own like the, each characters are theorizing their own thoughts about what's happening and then we know some things but we still don't know everything and I just think it's like intriguing it's like a book you want to keep reading but again the chapters are kind of long so I'm like reading this chapter I'm like I have things that I want to say to them can this chapter end and I'm like no it's still like a good 10 pages away so I just needed to stop to tell you guys how I'm feeling but so far it's so good I don't know I wish my voice didn't sound like this but besides that good reading I'm gonna keep reading yeah <laughs> enjoying how like when we're with different characters we're kind of seeing like what they're thinking like if there's a movie or a story that they're thinking about or they're planning a YouTube video or whatever like I really like that creative thought process because I'm totally that kind of person like I'm the type of person that would a hundred percent just sit at my desk and daydream of some kind of story and I, I have done that before my last job I would just sit at my desk and I thought of an entire story never wrote it but like thought of the entire plot system and all the characters and worked on it so I just really enjoy that aspect of being with different characters and seeing like their creative thought process while in like complete solitude figuring out this hide and seek game for like 14 hours in a day just like sitting by themselves silent hey i just wanted to give my i got my voice my final update really quick <sighs> maybe not quick we'll see so hide is about our main character mac who has kind of had hard cards dealt to her in life she's living in a shelter she has a really traumatic past of having to win a game of hide and seek for her life as a child and out of nowhere there's this hide and seek competition and she's been invited to participate for fifty thousand dollars and so that's what happens and it's just the events and trying to not get seeked and then finding out the real motives behind the whole hide and seek competition to begin with and i liked it i did enjoy this i can see why people wouldn't um, this is an adult book, but it does feel like it could easily be YA, but that's not a bother for me at all. Like, I don't mind a book with younger characters. I don't, I like YA, so it didn't bother me at all. So yeah, it didn't, that didn't bother me. I also, hey, hey, I also enjoyed the motives. It gets a little weird. Um, 
it is a book that I like, a genre in horror and thrillers that I find myself enjoying. Don't want to give too much away, um, but yeah, it's not like it's a trope that I enjoy. So I can see people like Kayla, for example, it's a trope she doesn't like. So obviously she's not going to enjoy the book as much. So it all makes sense. The live show is going to be later today, but I'm going to miss it because we've got a lot of traveling stuff going on today. But I'm really excited. Um, I'm giving this a 3.5 stars, I think. So yeah, a 3.5. I thought about 4 last night and I was like, no, that just doesn't feel right. But I did have some issues with this book too. Like the writing style wasn't my favorite. It took me a while to get used to it. But towards like the middle end, it got a bit better and I got more used to it. So I was able to follow along. I kind of like the POV switching, sometimes mid-paragraph. The chapters are long, which was a little bit annoying, but I, I get it. It wasn't terrible. It's only like 240 pages, and it literally took me like all day to read. So I did get distracted a lot. I did have dinner in between. Like I did stuff too, but um, I was up reading this until like 12.30 last night. So it, there's a lot going on, but I finished it before the live show, even though I can't attend, and I'm excited, and I'm proud of myself, but yeah, that's, that's high, that's that on that. As for today, my voice is still gone, unfortunately, um, so I don't know how much talking I will do while we're out and about, but at least it'll be a really cool montage of what we're doing. Um, we're gonna go and get breakfast, and go, I think, to the dog park really quick, so Finn has some energy to get out. And then we're going to drive up to Portland, which is like two-ish hours away, and go to a museum that's open just until September. I'll try and talk more about it later. Um, and then we might hit up a bookstore. I'm really excited. So yeah, more books, more books, more hauls maybe later. But yeah, that's what we got going on today. I'm really excited. I'm going to take you guys along with me. If I can't talk as much, I'm sorry. Um, I will be with Austin, so it'll be a lot of, like, in the moment for us. It is still, like, a day trip. Um, I'm losing my voice, so it's hard to want to speak. <laughs> but, yeah, I'll do what I can for you guys. But that's what we've got planned today, so. I got my first pair of Doc Martens. I'm obsessed. Um, but I also, like, low-key feel kind of like a poser wearing them. I don't know why, but I'm wearing them for a little bit today to help break them in because I got them for festival season primarily, but also just because I've always wanted a pair. And so I'm going to wear them a little bit today to help break them in and then switch to like my vans or something for the rest of the day.
I can't wait to finish my dumb cloud project. The hi. <laughs> How are we doing? Uh, it's the last day of the vlog. Woo, woo, woo. I've had work the last two days and it's honestly been frustrating to say the least. So I haven't been like in a big vlogging mood. Um, sorry about it. But I have fun things. So, oh my goodness. I have many things in which to share with you. Oh my goodness. Mostly the haul from Powell's bookstore. But I also had book mail when I got home. So I thought I'd share that with you guys as well. I know, I think I know what both of these are. I need to check Amazon. Amazon's been slacking lately on like getting the stuff I ordered to me. I don't know why. But whatever. Alrighty, here it is. Nothing too crazy. This is the Circe Woodmark um, that Fairy Loot came out with like a couple months ago at this point. It was a while ago. Ugh, it's so pretty. I've not read Circe, but I saw this and I was like, this is such a pretty bookmark. And I like, I probably will end up reading Circe because I didn't hate Mad Madeline Miller's writing. Um, I just didn't like the Song of Achilles that much. I know. I know. So, I, yeah. Uh, that's, it wasn't for me, which is fine. Ah, give me the book. Ah, ah. Oh my gosh. It's here, guys. It's here, it's here, it's here. Oh, it's so exciting. So, it's got a protective cover, which I, is fine. Don't mind. So it's a bit shinier, um, not so paper feeling. And yeah, this is Rose, the Rose and the Dagger. This is the sequel to The Wrath and the Dawn. It's a duology. I finally have it. I thrifted this from Amazon. So it's secondhand, but I really wanted this edition specifically. One, it's beautiful and I love this color. Two, it matches the copy I have. I didn't want to like switch to hardback or anything. So yeah, I have it. Um, when am I gonna read this? I don't know. Real pretty. Um, yeah, I have no clue when I will be reading this, but I'm so excited for it. Like, I could drop everything and just read this, and this could get me out of my slump, who knows, but like, I'm very excited, very happy. Now let's get into what you guys are here for, I'm sure the Powell's bookstore. So I guess I can like recap that whole little trip for you guys because it, I didn't talk at all. So Austin and I went up to Portland, which is about two hours away from us, to go to the Dino Landia exhibit, um, which was a hand painted, hand crafted children's museum all about dinosaurs and you get in the time machine, you travel back in time, you read about the dinosaurs, you learn about them. Um, I obviously filmed a lot because photography is encouraged. It started from TikTok, that's how it became such a big thing. It was really cool and exciting. It ends, I believe, September 10th and then shortly after that will be his Halloween exhibit that he's doing from September to October, which is also exciting. So yeah. It was a very long day. We got there probably like two or three-ish, walked to the exhibit, walked around there for like 25, 30 minutes or something, um, took our pictures, had a good time, walked back to the car, figured out where we wanted to go for lunch. We were like, oh my god, this place is a view, it's right on like the river or whatever. And we were like, that sounds great. But there's also a massive event happening. It was like the big float day in Portland. So there were like food trucks everywhere, a lot of people walking. The restaurant we wanted to go to was completely booked for the entire day. So we were like, okay, not that. And so we walked back to the car. And I'm saying that because it was like a 30 minute walk there, not to mention the times we got lost. So 30 minutes back to the car. I'm wearing the most uncomfortable shoes because I wasn't expecting to walk. That was entirely my bad. And I could feel the blisters and I was like, this sucks. And then decided to go to the original lunch spot we'd picked. 
um it was good it was cute it was very small and cramped though but i loved the food it was fantastic some of the best fried rice i've had in a very long time then we left there back to the car with our leftovers and then walked back to pal's bookstore which was literally like a jump and a skip like right across the street basically from the restaurant so it was a lot of walking but it was a really good time we had a lot of good chats we love hanging out together so it's like good quality time pals was amazing um i didn't film much in there because like i was overwhelmed to say the least pals is i think the largest bookstore in oregon and expensive as fuck it's so spendy and i don't like buying books full price i don't like spending a lot of money which is why amazon and thrifting is great because amazon does give it a discounted price i know there's a lot of like shade and like not great things going on behind the scenes but that's between amazon and the publisher and the authors that's not i don't i don't know about the publishing industry i don't know what amazon does to get those special costs from the publishers i don't know but that's not my business i am a poor consumer that wants to have books so it's more feasible for my lifestyle because I can't thrift every book ever, or I totally would, because I hate paying full price for a book. I saw Empire of the Vampire, $30. No, no, we're not doing that. No, we will not do that. So yeah, Pals is extremely expensive and I just, I don't have that drive in me, especially when it's somebody else's money. So <laughs> walking into Pals, I spot my first book and I'm like, I'm so excited. There were, I didn't go in with a list. There was one book specifically that I was like, if I see it, I'll get it, which was House of Leaves. I didn't see it. I didn't browse a lot in that section though either because I could point to like most of the books on the shelves about which ones I wanted. And that's just not helpful to me because I just can't be in that mindset because I need to stop myself because I can't obviously buy the whole store. So, it took some willpower to figure out what I really, really wanted. And Austin wasn't telling me my limit. He was just like, just get the books you want. And I was like, but how many? Like, what's the cutoff? Because these are expensive. Um, and he's like, we'll spend together $150 on books. And I was like, bet. We spent like $196.35. But that wasn't my fault, that was actually his fault. I picked my books, and then I was like, all right, we need to ban me from the young adult, the fantasy, the sci-fi, the horror, because I'm gonna lose it, the mystery. I was like, I gotta go. I can't be in these sections anymore. I want too many things. I'm so indecisive. I will just keep grabbing things before you get a chance to look at what you want. So eventually we walked around and found the things that he wanted, but I'll start with his books first. He got up, he got up, he got. <laughs> The Three Musketeers by Alexandra Dumas. He likes, I believe this is the same author that wrote The Inferno Devices? Or The, the Count of Monte Cristo. I think it's The Count of Monte Cristo. We have this same edition for an H.P. Lovecraft book that we also got pals a few years back. So it's kind of cool to like continue that. Ow. I have a splinter these editions of classics there we go words i don't know so he got this beautiful end pages he's already started we started it when we got home from pals i believe yeah and i just picked up sorry <laughs> what you guys saw that was monday i think um so yeah this was this is his fiction read finally it's like 600 pages this is a beast of a book but he's loving it and then he got Dissonant Voices, Religious Pural Puralisms, and the Questions of Truth by Harold A. Netland. I can't explain this one on his behalf. Um, but yeah, he was really interested in religious books. Uh, we basically went there because he wanted C.S. Lewis books, which we definitely got. So yeah, we got those books, but he's been on a little, like, religious journey of picking up Christian books, but also trying to understand, like, other religions in some ways just trying to like expand his horizon of knowledge so the next book that he got i think all of the next books he got are going to be in the same author category so this is the pilgrim's 
Regress by C.S. Lewis. This, I believe, was his first novel, um, and it's illustrated. It was illustrated by Michael Ho Hegg. So yeah, this was one of the books that he got. I think we're both pretty excited to read this one. I've yet to read the Chronicles of Narnia. I have it sitting over here. I've had the books forever. I just haven't gotten around to reading them. But I am looking forward to. I'm hoping to maybe this Christmas. The next thing that he got was the Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis. This is a book that he and I have actually been actively reading <laughs> for months now. Like it's taken us a very long time. The audiobook so freaking good one specific audiobook that's like completely full production fantastic but um it's been very far and few between so i definitely think this is one that i would read along with the audiobook to like catch me back up to speed because it's really easy to forget what's happening when i'm reading so many other books but this is one of his favorites we have a uh, mere christianity in the same edition so i forced him to get that one but then we found a steal. Well, I say a steal. This was $40. This is the Signature Classics by C.S. Lewis. This has Mere Christianity, The Screw Tape Letters, Miracles, The Great Divorce, The Problem of Pain, A Grief Observed, The Abolition of Man, and The Four Loves. So, a beast, but a floppy beast. Oh my god, we love to see the flop. Um... But yeah, it's just like a big edition of all of these books. Austin's favorite author is C.S. Lewis, followed by Tolkien, funny enough. It's one of those things that it's just like it was there. We didn't need it, but also we kind of needed it. So he's very excited for that. And it'll be nice because it's a good way for me to read his works as well. And then finally, Austin's last pick was this beautiful collector, not a collector, but a the classic story collection they had so many of these like pirates and ghosts haunted house short stories like everything you could ever want in these editions and i just think they're so pretty um this was only 20 dollars too like not terrible this is the entire sherlock holmes collection which personally here's the thing guys i don't know if you've seen my like mini classics shelf tour if you want book tours like legit let me know um i am hoping to get new bookshelves and kind of like reorganize my library this year so if you want bookshelf tours before that happens and then after that happens let me know and i'll do it but we have a lot of sherlock Holmes books like a lot a lot but i think i will prefer to read it out of this as one big volume because the font is kind of small but i don't think it's terrible um, so I think this would be the preferred way for me to read it. Alrighty. Into the fun things. I felt so bad. I would just like walk around, see a book, put it in the basket. Like I, no thoughts, head empty, just books. Just get all of the books you could ever want. And I just felt so bad. I had to check the price on every single book. I hate, hate, hate spending this much money on something that I know I could get cheaper. But these were books that I don't have access to audiobooks through Scribd, books that I have really high hopes for, that I'm really hoping I will love, and have been wanting to read for a very long time, like at least two years. So let's jump into it. The first book I got is House of Hollows by Crystal Sutherland. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This cover is so beautiful. I've heard such great things. This is going to be super high on my list of things that I really, 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 really need to read. This is probably like my most happy, most anticipated, most exciting book that I got. This is basically following two sisters after their return. So when they were younger, all three sisters just like vanished without a trace. Nobody knows what happened or where they went and then one day two of them just like pop back in 
just out of nowhere and they've got magical powers and they're looking for the third sister you try and get the fly um i'm so excited for this i uh i yeah most anticipated absolutely the next book in here is funny by mona awad this is like everybody's favorite book everyone loves this or hates this book i think i will enjoy it this is following our main character who is going to university and is invited to be a part of the bunnies which is kind of like this potential culty weird thing going on um and soon her friendships with ava and the bunnies will be brought into deadly collision so yeah i'm very excited people say this is weird i have a history with mona awad good or bad i'm still not sure i read all's well by mona awad last year and i read the first book or i like started it on a, or no i started it physically that's right and i hated it i hated it so much i didn't make it past the first act i i copped out like 10 pages before that happened and i was just like fuck this book i'm so sorry um i can't do it the literally dead book club was wrong this was the worst pick ever and then i decided to revisit the book later through audible audible audibly um so i listened to the audiobook and i loved it i thought it was great so it just wasn't the right time but i enjoyed it afterwards and i'm hoping that i will enjoy bunny because everyone loves bunny i'm like i want to be a cool girl i want to be one of those girls the girlies that read bunny <laughs> the next thing that I got was Pure Nessie by Suzanne Clark. This was on sale and I was like, oh, absolutely, I'm going to get it. It's not really on sale, but like, I'll take it. I'm so excited. I don't love controversial. I don't know. I don't love these. I hate these kind of paperbacks, but whatever. It is what it is. I'm super excited for this one. I was going to read the ebook, but I decided I saw it. It's on sale. Let's do it. I think this is one that Austin might enjoy too. This is basically following Pierre Nessie through his house of unlimited home and halls and doors and so on and so forth. And there's another person there that he calls the other. And sometimes we'll talk to Pierre Nessie, but there might be someone else. Like weird things are going on. Everyone says that they love this, but you do not understand what's happening the first half of the book. And I'm here for those vibes. Like, I can handle that. So, yes, I'm super excited for Pure Nessie. I also love that cover. And the next last paperback that I picked up honestly was a total whim. I just, like, Austin was looking for something. And so I saw this on the shelf and I said, <gasps> he doesn't need to know. I got Gods of Jade and Shadow. This is by Sylvia Marina Garcia. Oh, I didn't know this was written. <laughs> that makes sense. I've not read any of her books. I I want to. I do. It's on the list of things to do. But that's good to know. Yes, I'm so excited. I can't get the audiobook for this anywhere. I don't have Audible because it's too fucking expensive but i saw it and i was like i need it because one this is just good to have on your shelves uh tbr games do be bringing up prompts of like gods words colors like this is a perfect book to have on my shelves just in case i don't know what this is about anymore i kind of don't want to know what this is about anymore i'm sorry but yeah i got it <laughs> and then i got two hardbacks which normally not something i would do but the price was right and i was like you know i'll let myself have it the first one that i got was iron widow this is just such a beautiful cover and like the back too i'm just i'm into it i also don't really know what this one is about i want to say is this the seamstress one i don't know this might be a Mulan thing we will figure it out when i read it but i am excited to have this i've heard fantastic reviews so it's just one of those books that I was like, I should do it. And this final one is probably my most exciting one because it's 10 I got this for $10. This is Defy the Night by Bridget Kemmerer. Kemmerer? Kemmerer. 
come around. Yeah. And bookmarks. I got Defy the Night. I've heard mixed reviews. The sequel for this, I think, just came out or is coming out this year. I don't remember. But Carrie Can Read read this and she enjoyed it. And I really liked her review on it. So I said, yeah, for $10, we'll get this. Absolutely. It was one of those books, like, everyone got the paperback edition, I think, in a fairy loot a few months ago before I had fairy loot, of course. And I was like, oh, that's fine. Like, I'm not that interested in it. And then I saw Carrie's review and I was like, okay, I'm interested. So I picked it up. Oh my goodness. I should not be allowed to do these things. So this is my haul of all the books that my wonderful, spectacular, no, this one's not. This one I bought. These are all of the books that my wonderful, spectacular, kind boyfriend let me get. Um, I don't... We were saying we were celebrating me for something, as some kind of work achievement, but I genuinely don't remember anymore, which is unfortunate. But I'm really grateful that I have all of these beautiful books. Like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, what a stack. Um... Yeah, I'm really excited and really happy um, in my feels a little bit, but that's it. Okay, moving on from that, it's Wednesday, my dudes, which means that, what does that mean? I should film a video, but I also said I would hang out with my mom. So I'm supposed to go over to her place a little bit later in the morning, afternoon-ish. So I think I'm going to film and then head over. That sounds like a good plan, right? That sounds like a plan. I can do that. I have to clean my bookshelves. <laughs> it's fine. All right, I'm gonna go. Thanks for hanging out with me for my little haul where I got to ramble a whole bunch to you. Hey guys, I just wanted to pop on and close out this vlog thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me i know my vlogs lately have a bit definitely a bit more like travel focused a little bit less reading focused i have been in quite the slump lately so i am really hoping that that will end i can just go back to reading like i used to i used to read maybe three books in a vlog and i was like one a week which is still fine no pressure i just miss it a little bit but overall I'm having a lot of fun with these vlogs. I think next week we're gonna try and focus on reading and kick this stupid slump's butt. But until then, I will see you guys so soon in my next video. I'm gonna back on my schedule. I know I said that last week and that didn't happen because I lost my voice, but we're gonna get back on my schedule. I'm gonna post more content for you guys. I got a lot of things coming. It's really exciting. So thank you guys for watching and sticking around. Thank you to those who are always there in my comments to cheer me on and support me. I appreciate you guys so much more than you will ever know. And I will see you guys this Sunday with a video. I promise. I promise. Okay? I'll see you guys later. Bye.